All right, hi again, everyone. So changed it up a little bit more. I think I've settled on uh, this setup here. So we've got our light bulb on, just this little guy right here. And that's running at 115 volts. And we've got here uh, just about Hundred and eleven kilohertz. And so we've got the Akula. Uh, actually I don't know what circuit this is, I guess, but uh, we've got adjustable duty cycle and adjustable frequency on the TL494. And that's driving a couple IRF 640s. I have uh, doubled the core because it had been these uh, little tiny cores that were getting really hot. So this guy is running absolutely cool uh, with the full wattage going here. <clears throat> so uh, next thing is to rebuild this guy and uh, pretty much like the Akula 0083 schematic where it synchronizes uh, the base of the MOSFET here with these guys here driving. So signal sent from here normally to the bases of these MOSFETs to uh, alternate <clears throat> but uh, that's gonna now send a signal to this guy which is gonna have a Schmidt trigger and a NAND chip as well which are gonna regulate the base here. So I uh, got this guy running at about 400 and, uh, or sorry, 386 or 384 kilohertz. So I've got this guy tuned to about 96 or 97 kilohertz. And uh, one thing that found out recently was the little ferrite choke here should be a certain proximity to the output coil that gives a certain rise when it's just the Tesla coil running. And these windings are gonna be for the primary driving uh, when we get the other circuit built. It's about 70 volts coming off of these two leads. <clears throat> uh, the bifiler winding is driven by the four turns now. And I've got a little different winding configuration for the output, but there's multiple points where the caps are coming off. So these bus bars are, or I guess just terminal buses, are used to split off the capacitors. <clears throat> so everything is resonant for about 97 kilohertz. And I'm um, just bypassing these rectifiers and taking the AC straight off of uh, the output. So uh, we get a nice addition, oh. <laughs> a little burn there. So we get a little bit added power when we have this, this capacitor on, which is uh, just four nanos. And then we've got these guys, which is set up as two nanos. Burned myself pretty bad. <clears throat> so I'm gonna turn it off for a sec while I disconnect this. Then we can put it on and off and show you. So goes from about 102. up to 119 115 so again that capacitor is another important one
Okay. <clears throat> um, I made this, uh, actually I had this coil, and then I decided I'd make an adjustable, sort of, uh, scraped off a bunch of the enamel along there, but I found the thing needed to again be lowered, so I added this ferrite in the end of it, lowering it down to about um, either 416 kilohertz, I got some action, as well 384 kilohertz is where it's uh, set for right now. I've got three turns on the primary, and you can see the rise in the probe here. So it starts to activate about here. And then above the top load, starts to activate a bit more intense. Yeah, so uh, this is looking pretty good. Uh, if you recall the last video, I had the winding uh, following the Tesla patent, but in this case, I had just taken another BMW coil <laughs> um, and just rewound this guy onto it, and because the base layer BMW coil was clockwise, I used that as the reference uh, to wind everything else. So, um, if you're following the Akula schematic and the Ruslan winding, it'll be basically that. The difference is how I've got the yoke run to uh, the main winding here, the output coil but that's tuned across across the yoke winding and across the output coil and across the bifiler winding uh, there's basically three sections where there's capacitors and instead of just two where there had been normally one off of the bifiler winding and one off the output coil but now there's one across the yoke winding 28 turn as well. Mine may be a bit more than 28 turns but it's uh, not too far off. I wanted to basically keep it standardized to what other people are doing and it's easily tunable with capacitors so. Um, that's about all I've got now, just uh, took me a while to get this circuit running and um, it was kind of an alternative, alternative <clears throat> to the one I wanted to build, but this one is uh, shown in some of the full, complete schematics as well, so this guy driving the center tap on the yoke, and next would be to connect these windings up to drive the primary on the Tesla coil, and then synchronize it to the output board. So, yeah, the uh, frequency is about four times less exactly. And uh, it's tough to hear with the cooling fans, but uh, when I play around 125 kilohertz uh, in that range, plus or minus 10 kilohertz, I start to get that radio uh, or the uh, internet connection old modem sound and of course the light flickers when I go in and out of resonance But when it's nicely in tune like that, 
It uh, doesn't make any squealing. So that's the center tap push pull running at 100 kilohertz. And now we'll turn that off. And we'll zoom in to see the Tesla coil. And now, let's watch when I adjust the ferrite. Slide it out. In. So, that's pretty nice. Bring it down to the perfect 384 kilohertz. And there's some uh, heat on this bulb still, but if I turn on this bulb, we'll get a bit of glow. <clears throat> Just this one's a frosted, so anyway, I'll use this guy. So uh, this now is uh, basically four times the frequency of this guy. <clears throat> so for some reason it does not exactly match up with four times the frequency but from uh, roughly 384 to, I guess, 117 kilohertz in this case, going down, it just loses a bit of that voltage, so. So, anyway, <clears throat> and then switching off the load. <clears throat> 163 volts. Switch back on this other bulb here. So the resonance changed slightly. So I'll just dial that back on. Nice. So, what's that? 117 kilohertz again. <clears throat> anyway, looks like a winner. So, now just to synchronize the two, looks like the sets of coils are in tune with one another and the capacitors are right. Uh, so, talk to you guys soon.